Dr. Tony Gagliardi is here and I'm going to just ask you, unmute yourself. I'm so pleased. Looking forward to saying hello to you. Great. I am great. And you? Super. Thank you. So pleased to see you. And you know, it's the middle of the afternoon where you are, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's two o'clock and raining like crazy. <laughs> well, I hope, I mean, where are you? Where are you based generally? Now in Asheville, North Carolina. I was in California for many, many years and moved to the South in uh, uh, the U US um, about three years ago. Well, it's just lovely to have you here. And I know that you're really busy. You've had lots of clients already today. This is a busy time of your day. It's also a really busy time, uh, Tony. I think um, in general for you, it must be, you must be, you know, contacted by so many people at this time. Yeah. I yeah, you know, um, having done Gaia Network uh, twice, I've been able to reach a vision I've had, which was to, and, and be able to reach people internationally. Who, are, who can't work with me personally and who need some kind of reframe for where, what's going on in their lives. So I feel very grateful for that. Yeah. So much. And I, it's, it's actually that program was amazing. And those of you who don't have Gaia, you know what? You might look into it. It is absolutely super for all. You know, it's, it's, it's got a wonderful holistic theme running through it. It's mind, body, spirit. It's all of the things you all love here. Um, so look, if everybody's happy and you're all muted, that's lovely. And I see that you're, you're not. Just pop yourself on mute there unless you want to say hello. But I'm, I want to start immediately with Dr. Tony today because I just feel that since she's given us the time to be here, particularly in the middle of the day, let's get going on it. And let's get back to that. I was watching you on, on George Nuri and, and everybody here knows that I, I love my husband dearly, but I have a little bit of thing for George Nuri. He's just, he's just is he as warm in, in person as he appears on that program? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Well, I think the people he has on is wonderful. And when I saw you, I immediately, and this happens with almost everybody we have on guesting here, is that there's something that it's one of those universal nudges that makes me want to connect with somebody and say, the people, the women here need to meet you. The, the, the members of this group and community would love to meet you. So thank you so much for being here. Um, and let's get on because you really have an incredibly fascinating story to tell us. You do have your book. We'll get that to, to, to that in a few minutes. Uh, the Lifequake Miracle, Awakening Your True Purpose in Times of, in, in, sorry, in Times of Personal and Global Upheaval, forgive me, and we will go back over that. But it is the Lifequake Miracle. But you started, this came about as a result of a journey that you began um, when you were really quite young. Yeah, it began at age 28. You know, my, my life went into a complete tailspin um, and everything I had, had, who I was or who I thought I was uh, kind of cracked open. I had been raised uh, in the Catholic, Roman Catholic tradition. Uh, my father was Italian immigrant and my mother was American of German descent. And um, there was a very deep entrenchment in uh, that faith and um, also the analytic model for psychotherapy that I had been trained in. Mm -hmm. All of that kind of had to kind of get broken open and uh, a questioning of what spirituality was for me and what, how I wanted to be a, a vessel for, for others healing as well. So a lot cracked open. And unfortunately at that age, because financial security and security in general was so important to me, I did not have the tools emotionally to make that transition easily. And so it took some dramatic crises in order to wake me up. You had some serious shifts, didn't you? I mean, Indeed. And you had accidents one after the other in one week. Yeah, three in six days. <laughs> And if yeah. something wasn't telling you to stop and take a look, and is, you even say that, you know, you were rear-ended, you know, it was kind of a dig from the back on each occasion. Right. right. So I talk about car accidents in, in the Lifequake Miracle, and I also have blogged on, it's actually been the most popular blog that people have responded to because they're a metaphor, you know, and because I'm still at my roots, a Jungian, um, I look to the dream time and in dreams, when people uh, dream of, of cars, it has to do with how they're moving through life. So the same thing is true with this reality. And uh, the fact that all three times 
It wasn't my quote unquote fault. I was hit from behind. And in fact, the third accident, I wasn't even driving. I was in the back seat with my mother on one side and my godmother on the other. And uh, we were rear-ended. So it was a, a message from the universe, move on, move on, you know. But it's so. so difficult to move. I mean, we know this, like most of us, you know, the, the life that we've established, we would let leave us with claw marks on its back, basically. I mean, there's no way it's going. We've got this. And yet to, to do that, and you even describe yourself as someone who doesn't like change, it's difficult. Hence, I take it the nudges, but you did. Yeah, it is still challenging. And that's why I think everyone who chooses a particular mission, it's often something they themselves are constantly having to master. You know, uh, just even recently, things in my environment uh, where I was living started to get a little wonky. There was an a insane guy in the neighborhood who was vandalizing cars and, and, and he kept getting bailed out by his father and he, so he was on the loose again. And, um, and just a bunch of like chaos was starting to show up. And in the past, I would have not wanted to move and had maybe perhaps stayed on. But immediately I, I took action, you know, and uh, moved out of that space very quickly. So I've learned to be more resilient, you know. And that's so. the thing, learning to be more resilient when you believe it can happen. Because um, one thing that's really interesting, you say that you, you found yourself not only through your own work, but you're through your own interest in researching other people's big turnarounds in their life. And you began a television program where you right. interview people doing this. Exactly. Yeah. That was kind of my way of uh, figuring out. I was only 30 at that point and I didn't know what I wanted to do next. I didn't, I didn't believe in the model I'd been trained in that it took too long to help people to transform. So um, I started doing this talk show in Los Angeles and uh, in Hollywood, and I was interviewing human potential pioneers, people who had left one thing to do something quite different people like Jack Canfield and Barbara Marks Hubbard and, you know, um, some famous people. So the, it, it was, I was learning through their stories. I was kind of gathering information as to what is the mechanism for knowing how to make that transition in a way that supports you. So I started gathering that data and then also uh, was given a download, you know, literally in the, in the midst of a seven month period where I was just staying very, very, inward and in meditation. And all I was doing was going to do the show and coming home and just staying very quiet. And this download of this seven stage model came to me for Lifequake. So and that's where it became. And, and, and because of your background, because of your training, you really were equipped to know how to, how to build that for the best. So what you're talking about is that people who are in the middle of a life quake, which is, you will describe what that actually is in a minute, um, really don't, I suppose, have time for the long term therapy that, that most people would, uh, you know, seek out at that time. And this model was yours beautiful place because you have the the experience and the the knowledge to 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 help somebody through it i love that but can we just before you go there at that point was that when you met with the astrologer is it stephen levine that ah uh, stephen levine yes was that point or or was that later yeah, he was one of my guests i was um uh there was uh, in the news you know there it there they had talked about uh nancy reagan having used a uh an advisor uh, for an astrologer for helping after his attempted assassination of the president. And I thought that would be an interesting topic to, to interview someone who perhaps um, was an advisor to business. And that's what Stephen was. And so he talked about the best kept secret in America. And JP Morgan, who was the first billionaire in America, um, used to an astrologer. And when he was questioned by a newspaper reporter and asked why, you know, why astrology? Isn't that kind of weird? And he said, well, he said, maybe for millionaires, but billionaires do. <laughs> and of course, you know, there was that innuendo there. So that it works. <laughs> and answer because, you know, when you think about it, we look back at the likes of Chanel, um, who, who, yeah 
actually read her own cards every single day and didn't do a thing without checking in with an astrologer. So it's it goes way back in history, the, the sort of use of that. Um, and I'm really excited to find out more about that because that was the that was an enormous change in your life. Yeah, because he he said as his requirement for interviewing me was to do my chart. Ah, yes. And I thought, okay, it's, I'll, I'll do this. And he nailed me so, so well, you know, in terms of things that were very different than my persona, you know, because I'm really an introvert at heart. And, uh, and he talked about that. He said just how um, the way you, perce you are perceived on camera is very different than actually who you are, which was true. And there were a lot of things. He said, you're, not, you're actually a born mystic, Ooh. which is true. And um, so he told me a lot of things that made me just begin to, I just thought, I, I want to look at this. And so I started gathering information from my clients, just asking them for their birth dates. And just, I, I, it came to me so naturally that a few years ago, I went and had a Vedic astrology reading. And because I don't practice Eastern astrology, I practice Western astrology. So I thought it'd be interesting to hear the Vedic perspective. And one of the things he said to me was, and he advised the Maharishi at one time, and he said to me, you know, I don't know why you're even coming to me. He said, you were a born, an astro you're a born astrologer. You're meant to do this. Mm -hmm. And so it did. It came very naturally to me. It really did. I took very few classes, actually. I'm just a natural intuitive. Mm -hmm. And I know how to take data and just kind of filter it through that intuition. So that, that's just so, I mean, when it's a gift, then it just comes so much easier, obviously. And yeah. And also the fact, I mean, you do mention the fact that not having to get caught up in drawing up all of these details, that you have you have programs that can do all that stuff, that it does away with, you know, all of that and allows you connect, I imagine, much more powerfully. And you yeah. use numerology as well. So the two. I use. Yeah, most uh, most there's most astrologers just do astrology. Most numerologists just do numerology. But because the the focus of my work now is helping people find their soul purpose. You know, that's what most people come to me for. Um, I see repetitive themes that both the numerology and the astrology give me uh, to help that person really discover what their talents, hidden talents might be. Um, with astrology, there's a, it, it gives you timing of when to do things. So that's really helpful, you know, um, as opposed to a career counselor someone comes to and they tell you, okay, here's the plan. This is what you need to do, how we discover your strengths. And then they have you start getting going. And that's what most, most coaches do. They want you in action. They want you getting results. Yeah. And that is not, I think of astrology as being very yin in many ways, very feminine, because it, with that timing element, there are moments in time where I've had to say to someone, you need to spend the next year really quiet in a very quiet, simple, simplify your life. Mm -hmm. Really simple. Uh, it's not time yet. This is a, a fact finding time. You know, it's about connecting the dots of what is it now that brings your energy up. So example. Is there, is there anything more? I mean, you do say in a sense, because not only was that quite personal to people, but it's global as well, that you are able to read in astrology. And, and, and at one point you actually say that you could see this coming a mile off for some time. And when I say this, we all know what I mean, don't we? I mean, there's no doubt about it. It's, it's all of the incredible, uh, you know, just mind blowing upheaval there is in the world at the moment. I mean, we're literally drawing our breath and just taking day by day in a lot of, in a lot of ways. Did yes. You, 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 you know, the, what, what a life quake is, you know, whether it's global or personal, it is the soul waking up to the next level of its evolution. So as a collective energy, what, what precedes that waking up is, cri is, is crisis and chaos. That's chaos theory, basic quantum physics, that when uh, an uh, organism has reached its highest level in which it can, can really function, it has to completely dissolve into chaos so it can reorganize at a higher form. That makes so much sense when you look at it that way. Yeah. And, and is it going, if this is maybe this is a very naive question, but can I ask it, is, are things going to plan, Tony, or are we, are we being more challenged than we expect? Are there surprises coming to us? Or, you know, what, what is happening at the moment? Is that as it should be? 
Absolutely it is. Pluto has been in Capricorn now uh, for a number of years and Capricorn rules society. You know, so rather it's wherever you are in the world, we are a planet and we're affected wherever we are on the planet by the planets in our galaxy. So this particular planet is the god of death and transformation mythologically, and it has that vibration. So what it's doing is creating death of society as we've known it and um, uh, reorganizing us. And there's nothing that could have been more brilliant than this uh, particular phenomenon that occurred that really brought the whole world together, brought people home. They had to reconnect with their families. They had to decide, is, am I supposed to be with this person? Am I supposed to be in this job? There has been a global transition out of jobs, you know, and into new ones or into just the discovery. So this has been a massive transformation while Pluto's in Capricorn. And we're at the very end of Capricorn now. So that intensifies, you know, when it goes into Aquarius next year, which will be a 15 year transit while Pluto's in Aquarius, we're going to see a lot of the, I think we're going to see um, because Aquarius rules the alien. So that can either be the extraterrestrial alien or the alien, whatever we see it, think of as an alien on this planet, you know, the, the dark side of all that is going to come up. I think with what's happened in the Ukraine, um, definitely as people are being uh, uprooted from their homes, they're going to be considered alien to wherever they go, you know? So we're gonna be having to look at these issues when Pluto is in Aquarius. It also rules the internet. So there's going to be um, a lot of having to look at cyber attacks and pirateism on the internet. We're gonna be looking at um, the economy and the, the complete change into a digital economy. So this is massive transformation, no question. Wow, on, on every level, as you say. And really, when you think about it, this is where your work comes in. I mean, you, you are a career coach, and you've just said it there. In their hundreds of thousands, people are changing, not only the way they work, they're choosing to change the way they work, where we've all grown up, most of us here would have grown up with the model that you get a good job and, and get a good pension, and then you, you know, you're free to enjoy your life. And that's, you know, a whole new way of looking at things. That's definitely gone there. Absolutely. And probably yeah. we all have so much more choice and free will and, 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 and really we've got to dig into our creativity, don't we? This is another area that we've got to begin to look more at. We, yeah. So you, in your beautiful book, you have the seven stages of the process of change, really. I wish that when this all began about two years ago, I can remember, and I know others do too, that, and I had a number of workshops along with Trisha Hennessy. We had a, a number of workshops booked together and obviously everything went by the wayside. And as I was walking one day, I just thought, but how, how do I do what I know? I mean, what do I do? How do you, how do you help encourage people through this? And the only thing at the time I could think of was to do what you know, you know, literally do what you know. But now when I look at your book and I realize there is an actual process, is there, can you give us just a little outline of what that process is? And for anybody, the book is still available at Amazon. Oh yeah. Um, the soft cover came out uh, late last year, uh, 2021. Um, so know that this is a body, mind, spirit model. So with each stage, I addressed what the individuals may need, which is a distinction from the uh, various stages uh, on the physical level, supplements, uh, homeopathics, um, all kinds of things of that nature, as well as the tools for, for processing emotions and as well as connecting up with your spirit and your soul. So the first stage of the model is boredom. And we're not talking about chronic boredom. We're talking about when, because uh, in the emotional tone scale with ecstasy at the top and despair at the bottom, boredom is in right midway. So it's a transition emotion. And if we do something and we start to go into an inquiry like, okay, why am I bored with my job? Why am I bored in this relationship or whatever? As and I'm, I'm talking about something that's acute, not the kind of person who's chronically bored, mm -hmm. right? Where mm -hmm. you really were fulfilled at one time in whatever that might, might have been. To be able to take an inquiry, well, there's a, there's a conscious way of doing that and there's an unconscious way of doing that. The unconscious way is to try to quell the boredom, you know, be on the internet a little bit too much, you know, um, maybe drink an extra glass of wine with dinner 
It's very subtle on, at that first stage. But if you start to use the information with curiosity and you start to ask the question, what is, what is going on here? And there have been people I interviewed you know, for my book who were, uh, again, thought leaders that just decided this, I don't, this isn't fun anymore. Mm -hmm. And for somebody who can make that transition because they just don't find what they're doing fulfilling or fun anymore, it's great, but that's not true for most people. You know, so for those who do not start to make changes, and I don't, I do not su suggest at all in this stage making any radical changes. It's about data collection. You know, like what is it that, where does my energy go up now? You know, um, what colors am I attracted to? You know, what kind of exercise, perhaps if you've been uh, doing weight training, maybe it's yoga, or if you've had a yoga injury, that may be giving you a message, you know, there's something else I'm supposed to be doing. So then stage two uh, is the, is the, the star spiraling down. And this is, if you do not make some changes, what starts to happen is you go into, and there's a death process that's necessary in stage two. It's the beginning of the dying of an old life. So it's, again, that, that, may be where people start getting into further addiction. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is something you have to be really aware of because if you don't um, start looking at a new plan of what your life is supposed to be, what stage three looks like is a massive crisis. For someone who negotiates stage three consciously, it's radical severance. It's the ending you know, and the way in which you end the life that you've been living. Okay. So um, stage four, uh, after, after you, the old life is over, there's a period of time. It's been called by the mystics, the dark night of the soul, but it is the time to really excavate, excavate into the cellar. I have all these exercises I give, you know, tools, excavating your unconscious using dreams, using synchronicities, um, to discover what is it that I am, what, what, what do I need to do now? What am I being called to now? But before you can do that, before you can, because stage five is about the kind of beginning to take action. But in stage four, I, I see this as the most important stage of the model, really. Because if you don't look at your belief systems, you're just going to recreate the same life again. In a new situation. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have poverty consciousness and think you have to work to drop, for example, you're going to repeat that pattern until you change the belief system about how you work. Okay, so this stage is very important to be spending time on the inner level or with a psychotherapist or with a coach looking at the shadow aspects of yourself, you know, and sometimes in that shadow, there's an exercise I give called, you know, the cellar selves, where when you go down into the cellar, if you, you can find sometimes that there are aspects of you that are very creative, for example, that you haven't been able to give yourself permission to express. And they're down, way down in the cellar, repressed because you were told as a child, for example, oh, you can't do that. It's not okay. You know, there's a, 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 a brilliant film uh, called Tolkien, and it was about J.R. Tolkien and his, his story of you know having been orphaned as a child and been given a scholarship by some aunt to go to Oxford. He was the only one, of, they were all, he formed a club with four or five other guys, all were artists at heart. One wanted to be a sculptor, one wanted to be a writer. They all, he was the only one who was free to really pers pursue this because he knew poverty. Mm -hmm. He could live in poverty. All these guys were trust fund babies and they knew that if they really pursued, they would be, you know, totally, you know, excommunicated from their families, you know, and out of the trust. So um, what's interesting, what I found fascinating is he lived way longer than any of his peers. And I believe it was because he was able to really follow his bliss. Right. That is fascinating. I love that. And, and so in, within the book, you run that seven um, uh, step model, but also you have, uh, you have online courses as well. You, you have, uh, you, people can book in with you and have 
astrological readings done and and a number of other services that you have i imagine you have a very long waiting list uh, yes and you know it, it just fluctuates you know and on the personal level but what i do have and there's always openings for is the lifequake uh, miracles tribe and what that consists of for 35 dollars a month as right at the moment um uh i meet with people live i do a live activation once a month on the new moon and uh we build a quantum field everyone has an opportunity to put forth their intentions for what they want to actuate in this in the next month that's amplified by the quantum that i've been that i you know use my shamanic skills to build and then once a week i give out astrology tips that go through them you know through email for what days to do what you know because there are days for everyone, by the way, where things are more efficacious than others. And that's so sorry to judge you there. It's such a vast area. I mean, it's almost a, you really need someone to guide you through these things. And interestingly, I don't feel astrology is something as well. Um, what would we say? Explored in Ireland as perhaps it is in, in other countries. I think we're coming to it. I think there's a this is why I'm thrilled you're here, because I think we're really beginning to develop an interest in it um but we've had the whole old hang up of the, the sort of horoscope and you know um and that kind of thing but one of the things i find fascinating particularly working with women in midlife uh coming through what is after all the change which is the most perfect name for menopause when you think about it is mm -hmm. that in numerology because there are always new cycles there's always a new spring there's always a new beginning um and i find that such a hopeful message because we tend to think it's all downhill from here so the message of astrology of numerology of uh the the life quake miracle and 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 the work that you're doing is an incredibly hopeful work um and i know that's your that's your passion you want to help people make those changes so that they go on and facilitate changes for others mm -hmm. you know uh, the, the interesting thing about ireland is that it is steeped in prior to Catholicism and even um, the Protestantism that came off of Catholicism, it was rich in mythology, right? <clears throat> and, and the nature spirits. So that's really the, the basis of astrology. It's very mythological. All the planets are very mythological. Yeah. I, I, absolutely. And of course, even here we have the great Saint Bridget, who was actually the goddess Bridget beforehand. And and I think all of the women here have a great affinity for Bridget. Um, is that, can I, do you mind if I ask if anybody has some questions? I know I have, happened to mention to my daughter earlier on something about how you said people born in under Capricorn um, <laughs> should should take more magnesium, vitamin D, and something else oh, i had it somewhere it's gone but but that is because different sort of types within the zodiac field um behave in different ways and so they need other kinds of of nurturing and and nourishment yes um i do a whole segment in these uh, activations once a month on medical astrology so um, yes so each month, um, because we all have all of these archetypes, you know, and it's not just your sun sign, you know, it, there is all of these signs it inhabit one of the houses of your chart. So it will show up in some way in a particular, you know, um, fashion. So we're, we just came out of, we're in the, the, the energy of Aries right now, you know, for example. And so we're looking at I, the head and we're looking at the adrenals. So I gave them an example of, you know, if you could go online, what's so wonderful now we have the internet. There's a, a, an herbalist in California has Rosemary's Garden is the name of it. And she has an adrenal tonic. So when women are going through menopause, for example, often the adrenals flatline if you've been really working very hard prior to that. Um, this is where sex hormones are made is in the adrenal glands. So one of the things that, you know, there, there, there's an herbal blend that just nourishes adrenal function so that it can help with this kind of pause that one goes through. And um, so that's one example of how, yes, and for Capricorn, it's um, if people have uh, sun rising or moon, sometimes even Mars. Like I, I have a friend who's got his Mars in Capricorn and he's got knee issues because Capricorn rules the knees and the bone structure. So I will recommend things like for everyone, everyone should be taking strontium. Strontium is a mineral 
and it helps the calcium. You have to take it two hours away from calcium, but it's, it is a mineral that helps get the calcium and the D3 into the bones. And that's the key to being able to assimilate. So this is so interesting. I, this is so interesting. I, I, I just find it fascinating. And, and I also think it's so important to have somebody who knows what they're talking about in this regard, rather than popping off into the, the nature store and just picking up a couple of things we think we might need. That's really interesting. Sonia is saying, does each sign have certain specific things they should eat? And you're a Pisces. Mm. That's yeah. So Pisces have to be aware of all kinds of toxicity there because they are so much they're so sensitive and boundaries are more of an issue for them, energetic boundaries. So really being very clear because it rules the immune system, you know, for Pisces. So again, to go back to the adrenal glands, it's really at the, that root chakra, which is where the adrenals are in the physical body, supporting that, that is so important. So if you get overwhelmed by life, for example, as a Pisces, if, if um, what's going on in the world, if you're very sensitive, for example, to those things, then your sleep can get interrupted. So taking things like melatonin, which because Pisces rules the third eye um, and melatonin supports the pineal gland and the third eye. So um, every woman over the age of 40, if you're having any sleep issues at all, uh, should be taking melatonin, you know, a, a uh, slow dissolve, you know, one that uh, time is time released. So that because our bodies actually need, we don't, we stop producing as much melatonin um, and shutting down your devices by nine o'clock at night so that you can start to build it because you need to be in darkness for melatonin to build. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons why we become so sleep deprived is where we've got all these lights on at night and contraptions on at night devices. I agree with you. I actually stopped. I, I stopped myself a, about a year ago and, and have no device beside me in the bedroom. And actually, as much as even having the light off is a great help. Um, the fact that I'm not waking up and wondering if I've got something to check out on my phone, it, that's taken away from me. So it is. It's a big help. It's there. Can I ask, does anybody else have anything? We've got we've got an expert here. It's a great idea to ask your questions. Bring them. I imagine who said that? Oh, yeah, Sonia says, makes a lot of sense. Great advice. Does anybody want to ask Dr. Tony a question? And in, you know, in the area, I mean, you've also done shamanic healing. You've, you've been to, you've, you've spent time in Peru. You went through the whole incredible process, um, experienced a complete, sort of, as you call it, where you're completely stripped down um, in every understanding. I mean, it's far too big, I imagine, to go into now, but what a life. So have you written the biography? <laughs> well, it's it's included, you know, um, in my work. I mean, I'm pretty transparent. If you, if since, if think if if you had watched um, Sue Mortar's show, I talked yes, quite. I those who have Gaia, I watched Dr. Sue Mortar's show um, because there I really talked about the journey that I went on. You know, my personal journey, but it's in my book. It's definitely in my book. So yeah. <laughs> but there will be another one as well. I thought of her earlier, Maura O'Connor. And the thing I love about, I, my internet's unstable, so I'm sorry about that. The thing I love about Maura is she really is an Irish Italian because she can't speak without using her hands. We used to make her sit on her hands when she was little and she literally could not express herself. Maura, why don't you come on and ask your question? <laughs> I, I had to try and figure out where I had to go to unmute. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Um so I, my husband is Aquarius, uh, is an Aquarium, and um, he is, uh, he's in a lot of pain with, um, um, he's got uh, rheumatoid arthritis, he's got chronic pain, failed back syndrome, and it's just like every morning, what's happening today? <laughs> so I just wondered if you had any tips or, um, or anything that I could do to help him. To begin with, yes. Um, has he looked at diet in terms of where the inflammation? Um, um, well, we haven't been told. We've been to uh, uh, to a specialist, but she hasn't. I did ask, you know, is there anything he should or should not have to drink, eat, whatever? And we haven't got that far yet. So, so I would, you know, because I don't want to dispense medical advice, but I would say that one of the things that you have to watch because Aquarius rules the nervous system 
um, <clears throat> and the ankles you know, as well. Um, and the, the, in the etheric body, Aquarius rules the Kundalini energy. So it's fire. There's a lot of fire underneath that air. And they have to watch inflammation. You have to watch, you know, because sometimes they can be very perfectionistic. And part of the issue is trying to control everything, you know? Yeah. And, um, <laughs> so meditation really helps. Qigong really helps there. You know, I have a friend who, in California who's from Italy and she does Qigong classes on Zoom, um, which are wonderful, Daniela Car Carraro and um, things that can really calm his nervous system. Yoga Nidra, I have a friend, John Vossler in California who conducts Yoga Nidra. Um, so Vossler, uh, johnvossler.com, you can find yoga. What Yoga Nidra is, is that you're laying down, basically. It's a guided meditation, basically. You know, um, These things that can calm the nervous system. And then I would say, um, looking at turmeric, you know, curcumin, which is helps with inflammation and looking at inflammatory foods. Yes, yeah. Okay, great, great. Thank you very much. There's great. plenty in that, isn't there, Maura? Yes, and, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna have that yoga nidra, you were saying that you know that certain points in the in the process of the life quake, um, mm -hmm. there are different exercises or activities that are a good idea to look at. And you actually say at one point it's it's an idea to and going through stage three to look at yoga nidra. If if running is the thing that you would normally do, stop running and just lie down and relax, basically. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Quiet. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Um, anybody else want to come and just ask a question of, of Dr. Tony? I, I would love to ask, do you, <laughs> hi Trina, it's Gail. Do you see any change um, in this disruption that we're all experiencing? It's probably cyclical. I, I, I'm imagining that it's cyclical. Is that right? And if so, is there an end to this cycle? Will we know peace and calm again in our lives? Or do we have to change ourselves to live in the turmoil? <laughs> Great question. Well, I, I, I would say it depends on us as a collective energy. And I think uh, the more people who are connected and committed to working on themselves, sourcing their, instead of looking out there and blaming the government or blaming whatever, you know, your family, your history, your whatever, but by going in and doing your own personal work and being committed to your spiritual path, committed to kindness, committed to peace, harmony, humanitarianism, altruism, the more we are committed to our own journey as a collective, we will see the shift take place. But we, we're like everything, we have to go through the chaos first. If you think about uh, pregnancy, right? There's chaos that happens, right? A cell has to divide and, and break down and reorganize over and over and over again. Um, and you don't know what's going on. If you didn't know you were pregnant, right? And you were gaining weight and you felt horrible and you were throwing up and you were, you know, exhausted all the time, right? Um, and then you were having, you know, contractions and all this stuff, you would think you were dying, you know? So this is the same process. We are birthing as a, as a new species and it first is a ride, you know, to take. But this particular transition is a spiritual leap. So we're like Uranus is in Taurus. Taurus rules the economy, it rules money and it rules our values. The last time Uranus was in Taurus, 84 years ago, we went through the Great Depression. Now, it doesn't have to look like that this time. What I think it's gonna look like, because Uranus rules radical change. So I think how it's gonna look is probably a digital economy. You know, that's where we're moving towards, you know? And so that as, as humans have to get their minds around a new currency, a new way of dealing with money, it also is bringing up as it has the last couple of years, what do I value? What's most important to me? And spending money on that and only that. So I hope that helps. Thank you. <laughs> that's, a, that's a super uh, a super question, Kayla. Thank you for asking it too, because um, yes, I love the idea that if we if we it doesn't mean we have to we have to lose things. It means that if we go with the process rather than try to fight against it, we're we're really heading in the right direction. We're we're coming through to something so much better in the long run. 
Absolutely. And, you think about the fact that during the depression, people made money. Yes. Because if you look for opportunity, and that's the key, if you don't get locked into the loss paradigm and the whatever the news is telling you, okay? Mm-hmm. And instead you look like to what, where is my passion? What, I mean, people are creating whole new careers, you know, off the internet that didn't exist before, you know? And so the more entrepreneurial, I think that's who's going to survive are people who really choose to be more entrepreneurial and, and really use themselves to source what makes me happy, what, what gets me excited for the day and choose that. Then you're going to, prosperity will absolutely, you know, be yours during no matter what the economy is. Super. And, and also, I mean, keep learning new things. I mean, I, I spoke with someone the other day who said, well, I can't uh, come to your uh, the Zoom because I don't know how to use Zoom. And I said, we learn. And she said, no, 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 I can't learn. And I said, you can. And she absolutely refused to learn how to open Zoom. And so, I mean, that's, as I explained, it's a little bit like having a highway to everywhere and have no idea how to drive a car on it. So you're stuck really literally at home. Um, I think you were saying, Gail, how long will it last? That is actually a good question too, though. It, can you see a timeline, uh, Dr. Tony, or? You know, as, as I said, it really, I mean, I can give you astrologically, but there, it really is because we're in a time where it, it so depends on how many people get into their own consciousness. This is what will determine how long this is going to last. If people go kicking and screaming through it and and try to stay with what was in the past, then it will take longer. And I say that to people individually. When I went to New York and Simon & Schuster met before publishers and they asked me, how long does a life quake last? I said, depending on how resistant you are. You know, there are people who move through life quakes very quickly because they say yes to change. So as a collective, the same thing is true, that if as humans, we all embrace change and deal with our fears, and this is what, you know, some of my work is about is helping people to get to, I was working with a couple that, you know, this morning on this very thing on on her fears, and we just sourced her childhood. I took her right into her body, into that little girl who had to leave Syria and come to the U.S., you know, as a child and everything she went through. And that what what informed her fear of change. So we have to deal with these fears. And once we we clear the fears, then you can move on more quickly. So as a collective, if we if you want to hold prayer for humanity, do that, that everyone embraces change, positive change. And then we will see things move very quickly, you know. That is super advice. And as always, be the example of that which you wish for other people as much as you can. Well, we're the Wise and Ageless Goddess community here. We can only be as wise as we can be. Um, and just one last question from Gillian. Unless, are you okay with that? Is that it, would time allow you one last? Thank you very much, Tony. Um, Gillian says, is there a type of well being activity and relaxation specifically suited to each star sign? Well, you've done uh, Aquarius um, and Pisces. So that kind of leaves you 10. (laughs) You wanted to know, uh, so that I understand the question, a certain exercise or- Or or, relaxation, particularly suited to each of the star signs. Yeah, for example, it's the the air signs have really a hard time with meditation. You know, they're they're too mental. And so their brain gets uh, either bored or restless with having to do uh, a personal meditation. So they need something guided. Um, so I would say that's, that's true. So for depending on uh, which sign of the zodiac it is, people who, were, who move very fast, like Aries, they move very fast through life. So something that can allow them to ground and slow down. Um, so yoga nidra and, and qigong are examples of that as well. Um, but there are emotional tools and in my book, you know, and I also produced a CD that's on my website, lifequake.com, um, where you can, you can do guided meditations and it's the whole model, basically the system of how to be able to rewire the system so that you can move through change more easily and discover what you're here to do next. So there are seven different exercises for that. Um, 
and that every everyone can benefit from, and benefit from that that is absolutely lovely thank you very much and i think that's it uh, Gino, thank you so much. I, we could talk to you all day and there'd always be more questions to come and ask you. Lots of people saying thank you. Um, and I, I I just love what you're doing. I think it is so current and so, and, we, and it leaves us, it gives people hope. It gives us something we can follow. And as you quite rightly said in, in one of your um, talks, that when you have a blueprint, when you can't think for yourself to be able to go to something and see that there is a process and that each you know and, and be guided through those process that is invaluable it is the fear that it's the fear of not knowing what to do or not knowing how to process that's really bad so that does away with that particular issue so that's why i think um anybody who's really interested in moving through this global life quake could ever about your personal changes or or circumstances that you may be going through however many of them there may be uh, however often you have to there is a blueprint and it's worth looking into so if we go to dr tony garla Gallardi's website um, and I will give everybody the link for that and you can go and have a look at what's available I think you'd really be pleased and those of you with Gaia just go look up uh, both of I'll, I'll give you links to both those shows as well thank you so very much for coming and taking the time out to talk to us it was my pleasure truly <laughs> well very best of luck I know that you've made recent changes yourself so very good luck with that and I hope everything goes really well for you thank you Namaste. thank you so much thank you 